All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Summit 6 C qualifiers. We are still casting more elimination games. And up next, we got MVP Phoenix versus Warriors Gaming Unity. I am Loomis, and I'm joined by Hades. What's up, Hades? What's up, Loomis? Really excited for this. Oh, you are super loud. I'm going to have to turn you down a bit. Oops. No, 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 no you're problem. good. You're good. Uh, right. Please let me know. I guess Hades as well as the chat if my mic is crackling. It's been doing that for the, the whole night, and I need to fix it because people are writing. Am I crackling? No, you're not. You're fine. All right, so we got the draft already on the way. Ogre Magi vers and Slaughter versus Timber and Witch Doctor. Anything that stands out to you, Hades? Mm, it should be a rise in Timbersaw. Like, I think on this MVP roster since the shuffle, he has stepped up quite a lot and quite often for his team ever, ever since MPGL. So yeah, I think this yeah this should be pretty good for MVP starting up pretty strong, picking up one of the good cores. Uh, hasn't Ryzen been playing support? All oh, right, so I'm not that. I mean Velo, Velo, yeah, Ryzen's yeah, yeah. been playing support, but Velo. Yeah, QO, QO and Velo kind of been swapping on support, uh, or sorry, not support. So, uh, so kind of been swapping on the timber zone, depending like which of the lane it fits more. Mm -hmm. So. I think Ryzen will be actually playing the Witch Doctor. Although, yeah, Dubu generally plays more of like the, the tanky the tanky supports. Sometimes they do like their roaming supports. Uh, I mean, MVP Phoenix, they do like the... They like to go back to the occasion of Bounty Hunter once in a while. But, I mean, obviously that's why Warriors Gaming banning that out. And I, mean, I just want to see, like, I mean, observe more on how Febby... How is he, I know, how is he adjusting more to the carry role, actually? Um... He's playing carry, but not the traditional carry that we see often. Like, so not your lakels, not your burning kind of yeah. hit creeps and carry. He's more of like a. He's, he's more like a carry that plays like the third position most. Like, he, he lets QO farm. In fact, he lets Velo farm more as well. So he reminds me, his playstyle reminds me of Fear when EG had both Fear and Arteezy. And you would let Arteezy take most of the farm. So. It hasn't, to me, it hasn't been working out uh, that well for the team, but hopefully we could turn it around. Yeah, I mean, I think it's okay. I mean, at least you get three space creating heroes for you, which transition pretty well into the mid game. And they are, they are still trying to find, you know, find that momentum as they play more officials. Uh, we haven't talked about Warriors Gaming just yet. I mean, Ex Nova, who just recently joined our roster, he's kind of swapped around. At some point, he was actually offered to join Fnatic previously before TI6 as well. So I think him joining Warriors Gaming brings a lot more stability uh, stability of the supports to the team, especially since Nana is really versatile when it comes to what role he can play. Like He's played position 1 to 3 for Warriors Gaming for like over the, pa over the past few months. So I think Warriors Gaming should be able to give MVP Phoenix a run for their money. Yeah, and of course, Warrior Gaming still has that core of Ajit, Afu, and Nana. These players have been playing around for a, wit for a while. Um, am I remembering wrong if I say Afu is the one that plays a lot of Winter Wyvern, or is that just a different player? Oh, you're right, you're right. He does, they do like a lot of Winter Wyvern, especially before... I think he got nerfed quite a bit a while ago. And I think it was Warriors Gaming who started the trend in Southeast Asia where you would prioritize Oracle as one of the main supports in the, in the draft, actually. Okay, well, Oracle's in the draft right now, and no one's prioritizing it. Maybe they've kind of switched around. I mean, Nana, once in a while, he, they do like to switch things up. Maybe they... Okay, actually, Nana here. They actually could still pick up the Storm if they wanted for Nana. Okay, well, so far, we're going to pick up the Shadow Demon instead. Pretty good hero versus Sven, and not exactly a bad hero versus Timber. Sometimes if you have the time to actually get off that 4 or 5 stacks, you, you get that magical burst to kill him down. Uh, and also physical burst wise, they got slaughter, amp damage, they got draw ranger right clicks. And they even have the bloodlust to bust, buff everybody up. So it's an okay timber game. Um, you can survive and, and do well, but you definitely need a couple of items to kind of sustain against this lineup. Yeah, that's true. And actually one thing I want to point out about the MVP Phoenix draft, they have these really really tanky chorus now that the Omni Knight support get pick, gets picked up as well there's very little which Warriors Gaming have to actually control a Timber Saw with the Repel on yep uh, especially now well they have Demonic Perch to kind of take it off but obviously that's uh, a very long cooldown and you definitely need to back it up with even more burst damage now that there's a the heal coming up 
Uh, earlier today, we saw MVP pick Omni Knight, and they safe laned it. Velo played it instead. But I think we're going to see a little bit of a different adjustment. That game, they really lack damage. Though this game, they have Sven and Timber to provide more damage for the team. Indeed. And what is game in the dire side? This means they get better rush control, easy to take objectives. Yeah, both teams just really prioritizing their position twos right now. Or unless they decide to swap things, but I'll let Velo go with Timber down the mid. But I don't think that's likely. So, Warriors Gaming, I mean, for Nana and his side, this is what they like to do, actually. They like to draft Nana's hero last very, very often. It's very rare that they would draft his hero so early. But, I mean, obviously now they're still waiting. But I think they might just ban out a Kyo hero. I mean, Invoker is still inside as well. You might even just consider banning out Tinker. Okay. Uh, apparently, my mic has been popping. But I've tried to fix it. So... Let me know, chat, if it's popping again. Uh, but like you said, they're leaving Lana's heroes last, and well, Storm is actually being taken out against them. Uh, I feel like they actually have enough Disable to deal with the Storm, but maybe they just don't want another hero that could get up to Draw Ranger's face. You already got Timber and Sven to, to work against. I'm not sure if this is even a great Drow lineup, or uh, Drow game, actually. It's still pretty doable, because you know, obviously you have Amplify damage, so you can really siege towers very easily as well with the Shadow Demon with your disruption. So, I mean, there's several ways Warriors game can try to play around this. Like, they can really push for these early objectives so that the Sven doesn't really come online. And they have pretty decent heroes to steal enemy stacks. And you look at MVP Phoenix side, what, what? Trend Protector? Okay, wow. this is where they come up with another fancy pick. Yeah, I've not seen MVP play this. And the question now becomes, is Omni supporting or is it Treant supporting? Because both heroes could play the three position. I think Trian plays the three position a little bit better. Um, and both of these heroes are extremely EXP greedy. So I, I already think the draft is quite, kind of greedy as well. I think as well, like they, this could have been a bit inspired by Wings Gaming. I think a bit earlier on, a couple of days ago, I casted it where Trian Protector was played as that roaming Trian where you get that level one into nature's guys, just go around bashing people because of his high base damage. And you just let the Omni Knight get the farm. So th this way, it's, it's still pretty okay because train you never have to worry about farm because you can always go back to the jungle, get a quick Iron Talon, and you can still get pretty decent levels Ooh. like a Crystal Maiden. But Ursa mid. Yeah, Warriors Gaming, they really want to fight very, very early on to snowball very hard. Because late game, I don't see them scaling that well against MVP Phoenix. Yeah, here's the thing about Ursa pick in this game. Uh, you ha you have to snowball hard, like you said. Um, has a good matchup versus Timber, can man fight Sven even in the early phases of the game. However, if you don't get the good scaling, you don't get the good items, Chakram is going to wreck you in the mid game. The slow is so good, you're old or not old. Overgrowth is going to be good against you because Ursa, instead of going for like the BKB, a lot of times opt for more kind of early game fighting items like Mask of Madness, Blink Dagger, that kind of stuff. And lastly, Living Armor, not only good against the Drow pushing lineup, also very good against the Ursa. So, to me, Warrior Gaming, this is a very risky draft. I could see it paying off, but I don't know. I, I personally like MVP's draft a bit more. It's a little bit more stable, um, and it's uh, less easy to mess up. I mean, actually, for me, I would favor Warriors Gaming just for the laning, but okay. if they pass like the 30 minute mark, I think MVP have this. But if, if WG Unity, like, they snowball really, really hard. This is where I think things will struggle for them. Yo, MVP, yeah, MVP don't really have great counter push. I did not expect this at all. It's a QO Omni Knight. It's a mid Omni Knight. Are we gonna see some phase radiance SMY shit? Excuse my language. I'm sorry, but I'm I, excited. I, 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 I really, I'm really not sure. But once again, the the only team which I last saw play Omni Knight mid was Wings Gaming. So. Yeah, this will be very interesting. Okay, I need to do a quick reconnect. I think I my Dota client's bugged. I'm on player perspective for some reason. Okay. Well, he is going to be up against Ursa. And if Ursa is... There's one thing that he's good at. He's good against melee hero. Well, that said, though, Ursa doesn't really have a, like a mid build where he's saving a bit of gold for the quick bottle. In fact, is it going to be someone else? No, it looks like it is Ursa mid. It's just a little bit of a uh, non-traditional item purchase. But Ursa against Omni Knight mid, that's where he will struggle a bit because Omni Knight, obviously with the purification, you're going to be able to get those quick nukes here and there. Wait, who's going to struggle? I, I, I think they're both good against each other. 
Uh, I, I would say Ursa kind of lags out a bit. I mean, sure, level 1 to 3, he has an advantage, but as, as the level scale, Omni Knight should have a better edge. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, another way to look at it is that I think Omni Knight will out-sustain the Ursa, but Ursa has uh, the opportunity to go for a kill if Omni is a little bit out of position. Because the burst damage from uh, the, the swipes, if he gets enough stacks. Also, let's not forget that the stacks last for 20 seconds on a hero. So it's very easy for Ursa to go in for a hit, back Top out. Lane, a bit of engage, Dubush. I think yeah, he's going to die here. He's really, really low. Oh, no Frost Arrow, the Shadow Poison, and definitely First Blood going away to X Nova on WG Unity. I did not see him actually uh, taking the Leech Seed. Did he just take it there and use it there? Because I think Living Armor might have done a little bit more. Yeah, I think they wanted to fight, but Febu is just a bit too far away. So maybe for that part, Ryzen and Dubu, they weren't really on the same page. Yep, looks like we're going to see things starting off, and that's going to be the Leech Seed. They want the Leech Seed for this, slowing him down, and the big punch. Ouch. Ah, Jit is dead as we have Dubu. I mean, what, Trian Protector is the only hero in Dota 2 that has more than 90 damage at, at level 1, and we saw that 90 damage being slammed into the Drow. Not something that she likes. And you started out with a win lace as well, and with the lead seat. So when you have to slow and that extra movement speed, you're not really running away. Yeah. Okay, Kyo got himself that DJ and Aura. We'll, we'll need it to uh, dance around the Earth a little bit. We'll see if Nana's gonna take advantage of this fairy swipe. And look at him go! Three hits, Kyo suddenly needs to like, purification himself. And I think he wants to be a little bit greedy. He's waiting for a creep to die to get level 3. Okay, let's talk about the bottom lane a bit. Who's got the better matchup, you think? Should be the Timbersaw, especially if they get too close to the trees. And Kang does not have any way to kill Velo, especially once you get more points into that reactive armor. Yep. Like once you get to, once you get pretty much level two, there's no way you're dying. You can start tanking up the creep waves, getting extra armor, getting extra region. And I mean, even scaling into the mid game, Velo will have a better edge. And I think that's his MVP's game plan, making sure that he gets good farm so that he can start running around into WG Unity's face. Yeah. Normally, in, in this kind of lane matchup where Slaughter has a weaker lane, the one thing you could count on is, you know, Velo being a little bit more uh, over-aggressive. You get off a good crush as your supports are coming in, and you get a kill. But if you look at the supports on the Warrior Gaming Unity side, they're just not that good at dealing that big burst of damage. They're okay for a more extended fight, but that's where Timbersaw is also good at. And also, Dubu's got the living armor, which he might need for himself right now. Hey, the Shadow Demon chasing him down. He'll be okay. This middle lane is still very, very even. Like You can tell Nana, Rudy, he's out of region. All well, his bottles on the way. Oh, actually, it's going to be boots. So, I mean, like I said, you know, Kyo, because he's able to spam so much more. At some point, I think he's trying to get Nana to overextend. Because Nana's a very, very aggressive player. You can see the extra Fury swipes, the amount of damage going into Kyo. Yeah. But here's the thing, as long as Nana don't overextend, you can see the, by the way that Nana's playing it with the Boots first. He's so ag he's so aggressive, and he's able to force QO back. is actually not really hitting creeps. The CS is pretty even now, but I imagine if we look back in about 2 minutes, I think Nana's going to climb ahead quite easily. He should, but Kyo's game plan, obviously, he wants to get Nana to... He's dead! Kyo's dead! Him. Oh. Mm. Boots? DJ Nora. Boots? We're doing work, DJ Nora. <laughs> Boots? Okay, yeah, I think he should be dying now. Yeah, Kyo's dead. No way he lives. Uh, maybe oh, he could go in. The bounty. Oh my god, he might make it. Clap. Oh my god. Bottle up? Oh, no. Oh, no. That swipe lasts him forever. Yeah, I, I think he just underestimated the burst damage. And that's what I meant earlier about Omni could probably out harass Ursa, but the kill potential is always with Ursa if, if the other player makes a mistake. Yeah, but I mean, also, I was going to say that if they can get Nana to overextend. Or if you can force the WG Unity supports to leave the lane, that'd be a really big thing for QO. So for now, not really sure that's the game plan because those boots. Okay. Kyo might die again a second time. Well, he does have the repel and the living armor this time around. I wonder if that's why Nana made it go earlier. Somebody communicated to him that living armor is on the cooldown because there's no way he gets a kill if living armor gets popped. Nana is out of regen though. Velo, oh. very, very low, taking damage under the tower. Could die here. There's a regen right in bottom. Wait. Oh, Kangaroo. Yeah, Kang's gonna get a kill here, I think. Oh, maybe not. Does he get a bash? Oh, he doesn't have a bash, but. Dude, that regen, 22 HP regen per second. Reactive armor, man. Auto oh, crush, still not enough damage. Nice crush, dude. <laughs> you can't kill him. Yeah. <laughs> crush does physical damage, right? So, like, a lot of it, that's blocked too. 
Oh, top lane. Sorry for missing that one. Just lots of action everywhere. Looks like we had a big tower dive. Shadow Demon, ironically, is the one that's going down. Nah, it's very unlikely. Mid lane Nana going to work here against QO. Living Armor is already down. And look at the damage! He's hit him for 172 damage! Granted, there was a couple of swipes. And it looks like he does have the, uh, the bottle now. I, I think this lane comes down to... Once Lana gets phase boots, what item does Kyo has? Because if Kyo doesn't have that movement speed to back him up, he is just gonna get, gonna get run over. I, I think I think Ursa is winning this lane, uh, pretty heavily, in fact. He is, and X Nova is gonna keep buying him even more space. So they yeah he they've identified that they, it boils down to Nana as well, so that he can play against that Timbersaw. Because Fury Swipe to a certain extent, actually, despite that extra stacks of armor, it's really strong. Oh no, Disruption coming up, Nana getting the herbs up there, and QO should not be dying here, or actually he will. Mm, three stacks, slow, and one more, one more hit. Three. Bang! Oh, there we go. Yep. Well, Ursa versus mid heroes, or mid melee heroes is just not the way to go. Ryzen? Might be a little bit of trouble, he kind of turns it around here. Great Gust pushing back both Dubu and Febby, they, you know, they ping him out. They want him dead. Stormhammer, they should know that there's a war now. Behind them, they do eat it up immediately, and Afu says, "Okay, uh, nice tree cut here." As uh, is able to go through. Meanwhile, sorry for missing that one. As simultaneously, Velo diving past the tier two tower, able to pick up a kill. Solo versus the slaughter. He's actually pulling away further and further ahead in terms of net worth. Like he has one k net worth advantage over your slaughter. Velo's gonna get. You no, know, this way it's really not looking that good for the drought if Velo gets good farm. Yeah, uh, I I don't. The spin as well. Like, I don't he's think they. actually above Ajit in net worth. Well, that's the thing though. I think a lot of it comes down to the Ursa, who looks like he's thinking about going for Roche. I think if this Ursa gets big, like let's say if he gets uh, Mask of Death, Aegis, Blink Dagger, then suddenly MVP don't really have a a solid way to deal with him. And and like you said earlier, it just comes down to the snowballing, right? Can Warrior Gaming snowball with the Ursa? Yeah, and MVP, they were trying to go, they're basically trying to match WG Unity, making sure that they don't cower to the snow, the potential snowball from the Drow Strat. So, it, I mean, you think about who's going to transition better into the mid game, it's really, really hard to tell. Like, Ursa versus Timbersaw kind of thing. Yeah. And actually, with the Morbid Mask, they could try for a very early Roshan soon, and may even just rotate maybe one support to the middle lane to just you know, soak up some EXP. Yeah, what do you think about that? Like, going for the Roche now? Because obviously, instead of getting the Morbid Mask, he could get the Face Boots and continue wrecking QO mid. Uh, but instead, he's going for a little bit more kind of high-risk, high-reward kind of thing. Get the Morbid Mask. Because if the Morbid Mask Roche plan fails, he's suddenly going back in the lane where, honestly, he doesn't have that much more extra killing power over QO. Looking for them... Okay, I think you probably would would have considered the Face Boots first, but he's already bought the Morbid Mask. And I think it's okay, just like just being able to take the objective with the team later on. Like, okay. Slaughter already has that level six, so they can do it really, really quickly. But for now, they just they're just not in a position to make that kind of movement just yet. They need to like really change the efforts, turn it around to take at least taking down QO, who is actually chasing after somebody. Oh, he's rotating up top here. If QO gets in this position and Ajit is under the tower, he's definitely dead. Well, now Ogre suddenly is under the tower. He does have Bloodlust on the tower. They are quelling oh, no. blading through. He's gonna try to TP out. There's no way he makes it home. Mango is gonna get forced. They get the kill. And now, well, you could you could get a kill on an ogre, but Nana taking advantage of that uh, time will get a amped up Roche to work with. That will be uh, quite easily taken down. Yep, this will be pretty easy for them. And MVP for now, I still think they're pretty okay. Like they're content to uh, trade the, t the tier one. For the Roche, because this way they get more map control. Oh, well, I think it's more of like that's all, that's the only trade they could go right. There's no way they yeah, can stop Ursa. Speaking of Ursa, this could be a kill on Velo. He's already lit up by the amplified damage. All they need is one crush. Oh, he has no timber chain. Oh, he doesn't. He will not. And I think they know. Oh, he does have timber oh, chain. No, he does. Did he just no, level up there? Crush. Okay. They light him up again. The burst damage. Oh, no. one Are they gonna go for it? They thought about it. They didn't. Wow. Super close. Oh, meanwhile, MVP gonna strike tier 2 up top and eh, tier 2 is actually being brought down 
pretty steadily here. Kyo going to his towards his own phase boots so that he can run a bit quicker. Actually, that with Dejan boots. I mean, Dejan R is really really strong, and the way he's scaling right now, not that good. I mean, we still have yet to see a Guardian Angel because they won't. They obviously won't group up just yet. And I'm not sure whether they want to contest WG Unity with so many heroes at the bottom lane and with a Drow and Bloodlust. Okay, here comes Kangaroo. He's porting in. He lits up oh, Febby. I don't think they actually have a way to stun him further. Dubu's gonna maybe tank one for the team. He turns oh, it around. Have... Okay, do they have Stormhammer? He does have six stick on the magic, six magic stick, but still not enough. Now it's enough. They are on Afu, and Afu is uh probably going down. He is pretty fast, but QO faster oh. with that haste rune. He's still going for more. He does not have purification mana. And that'll be it. So they get one kill on the way out, and now they're getting the tier 2. Meanwhile, they did lose tier 1 to Nana on bottom. I think Kyo wanted to try for Kang, but just did not have the mana. And even at the bottle charge, like, if he did commit, he wouldn't have gotten the kill anyways. So, alright. Still pretty even trade. Okay. Nana with his face boot up. Most likely the next item will be his blink dagger. He really needs it to kind of keep up with these heroes. And Kyo, like I mentioned... Or like you mentioned, they get the face boot builds. Mostly just to survive versus the Ursa, but let's be honest, who hasn't tried the uh, Max D-Gen face boot Omni Knight in their pub game? Because that is absurdly fun to play. You walk in, you beat them up with your hammer, they can't do anything. If they fight you, you heal and, you know. Yeah, you should try to with an Echo Saber. But alright, now we're going to see X Nova and Nana go for a two-man smoke. Disruption into the Earth Shock, that's usually a confirmed kill. They need a crush. Um, should, uh, yeah. Timbersaw. They need a crush on Timbersaw though. They do. But the last time he had lesser HP than that and they couldn't kill him, so. Oh. Oh no, the disruption! Oh, crush should be there. They amp him up. Nana just comes in, pop his ultimate, but. He's not dying. In fact, he wants to actually go for kills here. Nana slow down by the chakram. Three stacks on Velo. Well, he's just running away, and guess what the Ursa man is gonna do? He's gonna keep on chasing, but look at Velo, already back to full HP, but look at the damage output of the bear man! All right, oh, here comes QO. He's out. Okay, QO. I mean, nice pop build, bro. Easy port. <laughs> I wonder if Omni Knight is gonna go for Yules, because I think in between uh, Phase, Yules, and Dijon, you are, you know, the fastest living man alive, right? Yeah, that's a pretty good item, and you take that. The Yule Scepter is great at hiding around the Ursa as well. Yeah, and Slaughter. Yeah, good stuff. We'll see. Yeah, RJ is actually catching up on the farm, just farming up the hard camp. And MVP, they you know the jungle, the jungle ward. They can start to make their movements down the mid before they go to the bottom lane. Because Kang, right, he's not going to get a Blink Dagger for a while. Like, he's not even halfway there. So this way, WG Unity's movements are very limited in how they can initiate fights because they're depending a lot on this Ursa right now. Yep. And you can see how Ursa is just giving them complete map control. They walk around, the supports get to drop deep wards. He might be in a little oh, bit of trouble here. Actually, that's a level 4 tree. Nana notices it, says, level 4 tree and get the hell out of my face. Pops his ult, going for Dubu. Oh. Dubu will die, but the question is, can they get Nana? They get his Aegis. Do they have enough gas to get him a second time? I don't think so. Oh. That Fury Swipe did so much damage. Velo, yeah, I don't think he dies here. Nice repel, helping him Is out. Oh, Kang coming through. That's a lot of damage from the Drow. Man, damage from Drow, Kang, as well as Ursa. QO's gonna be dead as well. Nice port in. He didn't have ult, or didn't have access to his ult. And he just dies. And suddenly, Kangaroo, like you said, he wasn't even close to his uh, Blink Dagger. He's at least halfway there. And now I think the team is about to take a tier 1 tower as well. Yeah, they're really close to taking that tower. Uh, but middle lane, they're taking it a tier one very, very easy. They draw with the amplified does so much damage. So MVP, like I said, you know they have no ways to really stop the push. They have a tree <laughs> uh, <laughs> against a draw. That, that's really, really unlikely. Yeah, tower will go down, and now MVP. Oh, the gust pushing gust. everybody back. Looks like we have QO going for a drum spill. They just want to run at them. Casket will fly left and right. And here comes Velo. They will get Kang, I think, on the way out. Yeah, pretty easy kill. Question is, can they get a little bit more? They want more. It's MVP. They're diving your towers. Here we go. It's not an MVP game if you don't dive a tower at least, what, five times? And yeah, you can tell they really want blood. So now they're going to try for tier one, even committing the god strength. And WG Unity, we just let that one go. Yeah. 
I, I really like to see MVP just uh, put the tree in, in the jungle or give him a safe lane of farm. Just give him the level 6. I feel like level 6 is so important against Ursa. It, it basically you know, turns tree into a free food into... Can they find a draw? That's it, nah. They won. It's too near T3. Ursa's got blink! Run. My god, and now Velo needs to run away. Ooh, Febby thought about the stun. I think if he stunned the Ursa there, they might have gotten a kill. I say that though, uh, the Disruptor was nearby to help him out. Yeah, so this is just MVP. This typical MVP, trying to force WG Unity into the, these very, like, panicky kind of situations. Mm -hmm. But these guys, obviously, they're they're quite used to it anyways. So Kang, he needs another 1,000 gold to his blink. And this gold graph has actually gone, like, what? An MVP's favorite, and straight all the way down to Unity, but... I mean, I still think this game is still very even in how it can go. Well, something that we both mentioned earlier is that Warrior Gaming needs to snowball. And, you know, they, they've been winning a couple of fights, as you, you kind of mentioned about the gold graph, but do you think they have snowball enough? You mean for Unity? Yeah. Mm, not yet. They should be hitting their timing after the slot against the blink. So that's the big item. That's the one big item, which is why they they want to slow things down first. Once he gets that blink, then they can start to really lock down specific targets, like maybe the Omni Knight first, or even the Train Protector, which will help them win team fights much easier. Yep. Top lane Dubu might be in a little bit of trouble. Gets crushed. Right click is coming out, but that Lee Seed keeping him alive right now. He'll be okay. Yeah, I do agree with you. It comes down to the blink dagger on the slaughter. How many objective they get out of it? Uh oh, Velo. He's gonna die right here. I say that though, that high level of that reactive armor plus 36 HP reject per second, 34 armor. Nana going hard for this Three kill. Swipes. They really need that amp damage. And now Ursa. So, I say that though, Velo. Velo still got a lot of stacks. That's 15 fairy swipe stacks. That's how tanky that guy is. 15 stacks later, he will finally die. But uh, Ursa definitely had to work for that one. He did. Um... This is just very, very uncoordinated movement. Like, or rather, you can see WG Unity, they just want to split, just get their farm distribution throughout the team, get their economy back up. But for MVP side, it's really, really messy. But now they will try for a smoke, maybe find the Ursa. He doesn't have ages. If they can kill him here, that's really big. Especially with Dubu's new level 6. Oh, Febby. After taking down the tier 2, wants to look for a pick here. Oh, they can find Nana. He's got blink. Can you blink? Right. Oh, that is that is reaction rate of well, Kuro's double damage of nothing. Oh, he's gonna get away. Ah, Kuro, <laughs> <laughs> remember that build that we talked about? Phase, Windlace, Dejan. He's going for the drums, and yeah, I think it yeah, makes sense. Nice. I mean, the the team is all about like running away or you know chasing, right? Like so, especially against Ursa, any bit of extra movement speed is great. And you look at Febby, I mean, you don't usually see spends nowadays in the meta where they will max up the Storm Hammer. But in this case, it's really good because earlier on, they really wanted to fight. So in that aggro trialing situation, it's good. And it's only now that he gets more points into the cleave. I think later on, if you think Velo is tanky now, wait till Febby gets that Warcry maxed out. And that's when you really see tank. Yeah, that's actually kind of Febby's playstyle where even when he plays carry, he doesn't go for like the most farm oriented build. And the most far more to build here is like, you know, cleave into Warcry, you go tank the Ancients, do that kind of stuff. Um, a good example of this is when he plays Drow Ranger, he doesn't max Aura. He max uh, Frost Arrow first, and then he even puts more points into Gust before he goes back maxing Precision Aura. So it's definitely a very different playstyle. Um, his item build has been pretty much the same. We're going to see that Blink Dagger next, but you're right, he's looking to kind of fight more instead of, you know, farm all day. Despite of that, still the highest net worth in the game by quite a bit, actually. And he still hasn't farmed his uh, Ancients yet, so... Febby mm -hmm. is the one man that's doing very well. Yeah, and Kang just got his Blink Dagger, so this is where they will smoke, they want to fight. Especially since Roshan's coming up soon. So, if they get a kill, this will easily transition into Roshan. Oh, the crush! Onto Ryzen, Amplify comes out, but the purification keeping him alive, Overgrowth. Now he comes out the Guardian Angel, turn around, Timbersaw getting one kill. Nana, they're dead in rage on, he's taking a lot of damage, but... Oh no, he'll finally go down to the Witch Doctor. X Nova out of the back, it looks like he'll be cut down by the Chakra. His MVP will just cut him down and whip the Omni Knight to burst him down. So the debut of that Blink Dagger, not really paying off a WG Unity. Yeah, I think they were hoping for to find one or two people 
isolated by themselves for a quick pickoff, but instead they found the entire MVP team. And that team, we saw how good uh, the ultimate for Tree. I kind of mentioned it earlier. I said they should have prioritized for it. But basically, you just ult whenever you see Ursa using his ult, and you just disable his. Uh, you know, a big part of his damage output is completely ignored. And, you know, he also provides more regen and more sustain for the team. MVP, after winning that one big team fight, goes for the tier 2. And guess what? Roshan has spawned. So, let's see if they can grab it on the way out. I say that though, here it comes. Yeah. Oh, the Dugu goes down. Here comes the Chakram. Once again, coming from Velo. But Febby looks like he's trying to turn into Afu. Disruption saving him for now. Velo. I think they can cut Afu down. Okay. Goshank just expired. So it's going to be two for one. But Ajit doesn't have the damage with Velo. That reactive armor. Now comes up the crash. Nana, can they bring Velo down? Yes, they will at long last. But Febby. Stormhammer, can he TP out in time? Oh no, no he can't. Kyo is the only one surviving. He barely makes it out. But that means Warrior Gaming will get that Aegis. Uh, speaking of Febby's draw build, look at what Ajit's doing. He's going for the exact build. Four points into Frost Armor, then goes back to maxing Precision Ore, but not before putting a couple points into Gus. And in that team fight, basically this draft that was is designed to have Ursa tank in the front line and have Ajit just arrow from the back, right? And that's exactly what we saw. So MVP really needs to get up to Drow's face and kill him quite fast. Yeah, that was a really good fight as well, but oh, they were fighting so early again. Nice tri three man crush. Really big, but the death ward going all the way onto Ajit. Nana's gonna try and tank it. <laughs> that will just cut down the tree and protect her with those fury swipes. And death ward not gonna be enough to bring X Nova down, but QL trying to run away. Can he stay alive here? The repel's gonna be oh. there. No, I think QL dies here. No, he pushed it off. He will use himself up in the air. And that'll be the death of QO. Yep, that's gonna be three for nothing. Uh, Sven joining the fight, he does have. Oh, he doesn't join the fight. He has a blink he's dagger. Would he go for Ryzen? Okay, they got a knight on him. Go. They're going, they're going, they're gonna dive. Ooh, nice force staff. And now cast it will force them back. Where's the Sven? Sven now TPs the tier 2. He sees a big fish. The big fish is dead. And now Afu on the run, but now the rest of the team. Can they actually- Oh, Ryzen coming in, but he's amped up, so he's taking more damage. We have ports coming in. That's gonna be Velo. He sees Afu. Oh, he actually doesn't go for the shotgun. He wants Unity. In uh, X Nova is gonna get picked. I didn't think he would get the kill. I thought the TP would complete. Meanwhile, Febby, Blink Dagger coming off cooldown. Five seconds. And that'll be it. Of Leechy damage just kinda helped him up just enough. That level 2 Leechy. So, oh, level 3. But yeah, that was really, really close. You look at Ryzen. He's- I, with the amplified damage onto him, he actually can get three shotted by this Drow Ranger. So both teams really, they, yeah, this is like what we talked about during the draft. They really want to duke it out. They want to fight all the time during this mid game. Top lane, Kyo sends a Nana up in the air, but I don't know if he wants to fight this. Pops a Fergation, pops a Repel on the run. It Repel, unfortunately, actually debuffed the uh, Living Armor, bring it, removing it. But, Have you seen his movement speed? He's running at 409 with the phase boots on. No. Actually, very close to 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he phase, he's at 503. Bottom lane. Looks like Ogre barely TPing out against Velo. Alright, this game is kind of crazy. Uh, Alright, so earlier I asked you the question is, are they snowballing enough? You said we kind of have to wait for the blink to see. Now that we saw the blink for a bit, they lost a couple of team fights. They won a couple of team fights. Is it enough of a snowball to justify the, the Ursa pick here? It's still very even. If you can win maybe one more team fight, then WG Unity can snowball. Mm -hmm. And we, ha we still haven't seen them use that Aegis yet because Nana just picked up the Diffusal, so Kyo is going to be shut down pretty much quite often. And I think, yeah, I think they are snowballing just enough, but we we'll still have to wait for the next team fight because MVP right now is smoked up. Yep, they are looking for the go here. Drow Ranger is juicy in the front line, so let's see if they could get that initiate on her. Dupu also has a one point into uh, uh, Nature's guy, so he could just invis himself in for O, and that's exactly what he's doing. Blinking forward, they see Nova! Nova dead! Are they gonna overgrowth here? Dubu walks forward, that is just on the edge! Everybody overgrowth up! They see Aja in the back, gotta kill him first, he is dead. Febby's man-tangling against Nana, but Nana? Oh, Nana is actually gonna take way too much damage! He is dead, Kangaroo comes back a little bit too late, there's a buyback on the Drow Ranger, they really want to win this fight, but Nana now sitting under the shotgun, he's being focused just by everybody, and he is finally gonna go down as well, that's a buyback on the Drow, I'm not sure whether they're even gonna win the fight, Drow Ranger still being surrounded by all sides, and Velo doing so much work, he goes forward, gets the Shadow Demon on the way out, okay? 
There is a defensive Hurricane Pike being used, but the fight is not over yet. Ogre gets cut down. Kyo. Ooh, the Blink Dagger left and right. They go. They can't. Oh, he's still alive. He is still alive, but I'm not sure Velo will be alive. Blink Dagger coming off cooldown in five seconds. Maybe they're going to try to run him down. They're definitely thinking about it. Oh, nice shock. I'm canceling the Blink Dagger for a little bit longer. He goes back in. He gets a kill. Velo making the plays here. Ajit does have the Hurricane Pike available to him. Is he going to push him away? Okay, Gus. He's actually not hitting for many damage. <laughs> and now Ajit, he might be dead. He's going for the QO, oh. but the safe on the Yules. They get wiped. Triple kill on Velo. That's six for two or something. Die back on Draw Ranger. All right, they did not snowball enough. That question has been answered. They, they wanted to fight that. Uh, just look at Velo. I just want to point out, he, he started this fight with six bloodstone charges. Now, he has 14. Okay. Oh no. QO is going to die into Nana. Diffusal Blade. Oh, but that cooldown though is going to hurt Nana quite a bit. Oh, Maybe they use him up. Back in. Maybe, but supports are coming in. Oh, this is just really, really big for MVP. Now, the game is in their favor. I mean, remember that's why I talked about where v between the Timbersaw and Ursa, who scales better? And I said Velo just has a lot of burst damage. So, this is, I guess, our, I don't know, my question's been answered. Velo's just going to snowball really hard. He's going to get that Lotus Orb coming out soon. Things don't look good for WG Unity. Yeah, and normally, you know, against a hero like, like a very evasive hero, or even a, a very tanky hero, you, your Ursa still can chop him down if he has like enough disables. You know, you can make the argument that Fire Blast, Demonic Purge, and then your Ursa right clicks should kill most heroes, but not Timber Soul. Especially now, now that he's got himself uh, Tranquil Boots. How often do you see Tranquil Timber? And then he's got Plate Mail as well. He's got so much armor that I just don't think they can force this kill. And if you don't force the kill on Velo, like that's what happened in the last fight will happen again. He just runs over your team. Yeah, and I'm gonna. I just did the calculations. Like when you combine Timbersaw's max reactive armor with the Warcry now. Like I said, Febby with the level four Warcry, and that's where Timbersaw will be super, super tanky. He has over 50 armor right now uh, when you combine all of that. Yeah. So Warcry gives you what 20, and then reactive gives you 20, and then he has you know quite a bit on, yeah. on his own. Yeah. The math checks out. The two Asian has confirmed it. Over 50 armor. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's not even counting the best armor in the game. Living armor, dude. That is uh, that is some plot armor. Your, your hero would never die. Yeah, especially against physical damage. So, alright, WG Unity, what's the game plan? I'm trying to think of it, like, how can they find a way back into this game? They need a couple of picks, but MVP, this is their game to lose. It's up to them whether they want to throw away this advantage. But very unlikely, because Dubu, he could decide to go into a Greedy Midas if he wanted. Or he okay. could just go into a Blink. That overgrowth, like, I mean, back in that fight near the tier 2, you can see how, the amount of control it had, especially in the Ursa, where he was just locked down away from his team, and the overgrowth, really good play coming out from Dubu. Okay, I, I think there is a chance, and our Shadow Demon player is going for it. He's going for Aghanim Scepter, which, as you know, it's a it's a purge, so Repels is going to get somewhat counter, but that's already happening. What well, the thing that's not happening is the fact that you get two of it, so you could lock down multiple heroes or purge at the same time. And lastly, the most important thing is, it will break reactive armor. So, chopping down 20 armor and a butt of regen, a butt low of regen for Velo, that's that's a way to start to kill him. Um, but I just don't think he's going to have the time to farm for it. He just doesn't farm that fast, and I think MVP is not going let, let to let, let him have the time. Yeah, and you look at Kang and Nana right now this game, if anything, I would say I would look to these two to try and get any pickoffs with WG Unity. Oh. But bottom lane, they want to fight. Three man crush coming up from Kang. But the disruption's gonna be there. Will they keep on fighting? They want to try to go for Febby, but you know, just Omni Knight things. Purification and Repel. Yeah. He's taking quite a bit of damage. Demonic Purge is gonna fly out. He will blink away. Crush is gonna go on Ryzen. They don't want to go out for the kill, do they, though? They blink in. Ryzen taking quite a bit of damage. Nice juke away here. It <laughs> looks like nice. the range tree was able to finish the last, and now they're gonna chase Dubu. Overgrowth again, kind of shutting people down, Can. Was that a self heals? That was a self heals. He will blink away. They need to fight with Sentry Wards or Detection. Kyo will go out. Dubu will TP out as well. <laughs> that you're looking for blood. Yeah. Actually, the Witch Doctor is a big part of their ability to kite and, and sustain, so. That's true, and they actually struggled to kill him just at the very end. It's just very unfortunate that he died to the. I think, was it, was it to the Purge? I mean, the Purge almost finished him off, but the Range Creep did. I think the Range so Creep, yeah. Yeah. But 
but like you said, you know, Shadow Demon, it's gonna be a while. I don't think he's gonna be able to be able to farm up the eggs. If anything, I would have thought that you get four staff, at least, so that you can kite around this fin. Also, I think we're gonna see Relic on QO, thirty-eight hundred gold right next to the side shop. Oh no, it's the cancer build. This is the ultimate pump build, dude. I mean, sometimes you add an SMY in this build. Is he not buying it? Oh, buy he's it, buying do it. it. He's buying do it. Do it. Oh, it's the Radiance build. I mean, it's so good to be divine, but I, I, I heavily doubt it. Divine? That would no. be the dream, but maybe <laughs> not worth doing. That's, that's like the ultimate way to throw. But okay, Radiance, that's still a pretty big item against Unity as well. Because okay. of the miss rate and that extra burn. So, I mean, hopefully it'll work, for, work out for QL. This is just him saying, okay, at the same time, Radiance can help him farm up quite a bit. Much easier. And I don't think it's actually game-changing enough to win it. Or rather, like, you know, for the, for the high ground part. I would have thought maybe trying to eggs, but okay, Radiance works as well. Okay. Oh, chat correcting me a little bit. It's three Demonic Purge instead of two. I've been confusing it with my uh, Blood Suka uh, Axe upgrade. That, <laughs> that only gives you two. Uh, this one definitely gives you three. BKB being worked on here by Nana. He will need it for the last base defense, even though uh, MVP did not successfully break the base. They did bring the tier, down, tier three down to like 25% health, so next one is going to be pretty easy. Alright, so they will try for a trade. Kang and Nana looking. I mean, like I said, you, you want to look at these two to create space. Drow, not really good for farming from behind, but Ajit has been able to still get pretty decent items yeah. out of this, this really dire situation. So they have the next Roshan available to MVP Ooh, if they want to try. Blinking but. forward, Afu gets stunned up. He's going to be fine though, because here comes a stun actually on a lot of people. Febby, he's got the shield, but he's actually getting right click Ajit. Somebody hold that man down. And now Q on the front line, he needs to pop his Guardian Angel. No, he is dead as well. Crush is going to find Dupo on the right side. You oh, can see oh, that oh, Witch Doctor it doesn't matter though, because Nana just blinks behind him. You can see the explosive firepower of Warrior Gaming Unity. They find four, they will find five. Velo, the last one to survive, and he does survive a little bit longer, but where did they all go? They just all died. And now Roche is back up. Asia's Cheese going inside of Warrior Gaming Unity. My god, this game, it's going to turn very rapidly. There was a 3200 gold swing going away to WG Unity after that team wipe. And it's going to extend even more in their favor because of this Roche. And this is the third Roche. So you get Cheese. I'm not sure what MVP were thinking when they died so... I'm, I'm not sure how you would describe that. Was it crazy? Yeah, there was like a Leroy Jenkins kind of thing going on. Well, I think mercy for it, it was a good dive if the Shadow Demon did not react. But Shadow Demon has one job in this game, which is save people. Uh, maybe you could make the argument that Febby initiated on the wrong person. If he went on the X no on X Nova, then you know it will be okay. And also, that's a classic mistake you see a lot of players in pub make. You know, you're the carry, you have a blink, you feel like you're god, you blink in, and then you realize, oh, my team can't actually follow me. So you die, and then your team dies. So that was not good. And you know how we talked about X Nova? Oh, like we, we doubted that he'd be able to. Hold that thought, Ajit! Oh, getting Ajit. wrecked. Okay, Ajit. he pops the cheese. He's fine. He needs to run. Does what he? Gonna fight. Death work going to work right now. Ryzen now focusing on Ajit. Everybody flying in the air, but we got Ursa, the Bear Man, coming back in. Overgrowth keeping him locked down. Febby still oh. BKB'd up. Oh, focusing on X Nova. Is he gonna get it? Yes, he will get it, X Nova. On the back line here, Ryzen being focused up, but Ajit still all of the while has survived, and he's just laying out arrows left and right. Well, he's gonna go on the tree man, we'll get the kill. And now on the backside, it seems like it's gonna be Warrior Game Unity winning this fight. The fight is still favoring them. Draw Ranger will go on Ryzen, chops him down, and that's gonna be yet another full five man wipe. Not like this. This is the second team wipe in a row for MVP. They didn't even get the ages from the on the Ursa. And yeah, I mean to complete my point early on, you know how we talked about X Nova not gonna be able to get that X? He just completed it before this fight. So WG Unity just really pulling ahead further and further. Yeah, it looks like he wasn't able to use any of those demonic purchases um, during the fight. The other thing is, if you want to compare items, remember when we got excited about the Omni Knight Radiance? Yeah, he still doesn't have it. So this game is the 180, the 322. Damage, you gotta believe, Lumi. He's gonna build into a rapier. He's gonna help his team. I mean, he helps the other team if he builds the rapier because <laughs> he'll be losing it pretty much instantly. Alright, so they get the first lane of barracks. Things don't look good for MVP, but they still they still have hope. It's just one lane of racks, and it, of course we veal. But it's so sad. He's back to you know, 
I'm not even sure how we say it. We just say step one. Because now he's back to six bloodstone charges. Like, the last time I saw this, that was, what, 12 minutes ago. Well, you could count on some Nana. feeds. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's a freebie. Okay, that's going to be a two-man crush. It's going to be fine here. You know, Witch Doctor all being dropped. Nana going to work. BKB gets pop. He's actually somewhat slowed down. Febby still wants a man fight. And here comes a Guardian Angel. Are they going to go on Aja? No, the Overgrowth is going to come out. They want to focus on Nana. Is he really the target that you want to focus? The Gust is going to be flying out. They do actually kill Nana. Shadow Demons is dead as well. And now they go on Aja. Aja trying to Hurricane Pike away the TP out. Do they have a stun? Do they have a stun? They don't. And Aja makes it out. Three for nothing if you count Aegis. That was, a, so that was a questionable fight here by Warrior Gaming. Just... Remember when Sven blinked in and fed? Well, Ursa says, I could do that too. <laughs> and it was so close, like the TP out from the draw. Febby's stun just came off cooldown just at that very second when Ajit TP'd out. So really, really clutch coming out. And both these teams still very even. MVP not going to give up anytime soon, just Korean fighting spirit. And all right, so he gets three bloodstone charges from that. Velo looking to find himself a bit of redemption. He needs the Shivas, he needs more items so that he can play, especially against this Ursa. Like, he needs he needs that extra bit of nuke. After the Shivas, maybe an Ags, if, but I don't think he has the mana pull for it. Like, just fighting all the time against Warriors Gaming, he's struggling to kill off, like, the Ursa and the Slaughter. You mean Velo? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he's... Hopefully, he will have the, the Shivas for the next fight. It looks like the Radiance is up. You mentioned about the extra damage output, the blind chance, uh, it's good. But I think the other big part is the fact that Blink Dagger gets cancelled. A lot of these fights, you see Kangaroo kind of re-engaging multiple times with Blink. Um, that that game plan is going to be somewhat weaker now that QO, if he sticks on uh, the Slaughter, Slaughter is going to have a tough time. Well, that said though, Disruption will find himself, well, free ratings. I'm just going to say I'm guilty of playing this Omni Knight build before in Party MMR. I, I think so, a lot of people has been, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you take that Vermanta style, it's pretty decent stats, and at the same time, it's great for dispelling the silence from the Drow. I mean, he could consider that item, or he could just go for maybe a BKB of his own if he needed, especially against, like, the Slaughter. Or, or sorry, I mean, not the Slaughter, I mean, the, the Shadow Demon Disruption, because so far, Ex Nova, he's been using his Disruption on the Omni Knight, all the tree and every single team fight. Okay. Oh, smoked up. I think they can find Velo. Oh, Velo goes in, and yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Talk about Yolo. And you, you saw the. In a QO. You saw him not having reactive armor there, right? Like, well. Yep. Oh, oh they go going. Come. Okay. Nah, he just wants to get the amp out. I mean, even though, even if uh, Shadow Demon did not have uh, his acceptor up in that fight, like he just died so fast that he wasn't even gonna be able to build up the reactive armor. But obviously, his passive was. Uh, broken, and he got wrecked. Febby pushing the wave up top, but his tower is in a lot of trouble. In fact, Febby pops his ult. He's gonna just go for a base trade? I don't know if you want a base trade versus Drow. If he doesn't commit to this, he already committed his ult, so... It's kind of uh, the point of no return. Okay. All in, all in! He needs to blink out, oh no. Does he have a BKB? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he will. He will pop it in TP out. Okay. It's kind of a big charge of a BKB, but defended the high ground and got a tier 3, so... Pretty a uh, big ballsy play by Febby. It's six. It's a six second BKB, so it's gonna come off cooldown by the time the next team fight comes up. So okay. that's still pretty big for WG Unity. Still, just to make sure that the duration shortens, especially for the Sven. And I I thought it was like a like a nine or ten second BKB, but I, uh, I, it was way shorter than that. He's used it so many times trying to cut down Ryzen and QO. Like right now, WG Unity's problem is trying to kill QO as he gets more of these items coming up. But hold on, they find the slaughter, Kang. Blink Dagger being cancelled by the Leech Seed, and Kyo looks like he's popping a repel on somebody else, but he gets found. He, he needs to use his ult right now, he gets silenced up immediately, and it's a team fight. Run, 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 MVP. is gonna get bursted down, he gets chilled up somewhat, but it doesn't matter. He gets bursted down so fast, and now Kyo in a very awkward spot, he repels himself, but... Yeah, good luck with that, and suddenly MVP 3 dead outside the base. The only saving grace for them is that the, the wave is somewhat pushed. But they don't care, they're gonna just like, just go. Oh, that was just really, really good play from Exnova. I'm not sure if you saw, but he, the, the very second he used the Guardian Angel, Kyo's Guardian Angel was immediately dispelled on the Timber Cell by Exnova. That's how ready he is, like he knows what he needed to do. Yeah. Or what he needs to do in these fights. And now that's gonna be a second lane of barracks for them. Just WG Unity taking away MVP's objectives, punishing those dives. 
they need. I mean, the only thing they prave on on now is Fabi blinking in, getting a big stun on a couple of heroes, and crits. Crits coming out. Uh, Daedalus is coming soon, but again, just time. They don't have time. Warrior Gaming poking in the towers. Trian not really doing that much, and Dubu, I don't think... He, he does have a Blink Dagger, so he could go for a Blink over Glove play, but it's gonna be Alpha initiating. They see Febby. Febby just bursts it down. Shotgun being used by Ajit. Man, that's some burst damage from the draw that I did not expect will come. Afu in a little bit of trouble. Febby breaks illusions. It gets purged. Oh no, he's the slowest man alive now. And Febby feels really silly as he's trying to run down and carry away. Multicast against himself, Afu. But it doesn't matter. He finds Febby on the dieback. Velo, manning up. Is he going to get purged? No, nope, purge is all on cooldown here. As we have a QO getting himself up in the air. And he is dead. Well, a lot of people is maledict up. But look at Aja's damage output. All right, this Drow Ranger hits hard. The E Blade is a really good item pickup, great stats, and he's able to just nullify Sven's instant impact. Like he usually as a Sven, you want to go in crazy, cutting people down, but just great counter play coming up from Warriors Gaming Unity. The itemization is on point, and just really good play at X Nova. Like if I had to say that was an MVP, it's the Shadow Demon. Every time purging off the target they were locked down on, so a Guardian Angel was net or repel, pretty much non-existent this whole team fight or this whole game. It helps when you have three demonic purges spare in team fights, but yeah, he, he definitely played it really well. Even before the disruption, remember when Febby blinked into the base? That was the beginning of the turnaround play. It was Shadow Demon, saving his allies and then kind of turning things around. But that's game one in the books: MVP Phoenix versus Warrior Gaming Unity. Remember, this game uh, determines elimination in the Summit Six uh, C qualifiers. Whoever loses this best of three ends their journey. So it's kind of a pretty big game, at least for both of these teams. Warrior Gaming up one. Game 2 is going to be coming away in just about a couple of minutes. He's been Hades, I've been Luminous. We'll be back for Game 2, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in a bit.